Let's talk market volatility, shall we? If you are new to the markets, you may be experiencing this type of volatility for the very first time. It's important to understand some things that you might have been used to as far as ranges in stocks can change and have changed because of the volatility. We're going to tell you a few things you need to know about understanding volatility, guys. Yeah, and I think the simplest way to think about volatility, it's, it's you, the, the amount of price movement, the, how rapid the price movement is, and the scope of uh, price movement. And the way that we think about that as traders in the most simplified terms is how much does a stock move when it, when it goes? You know, you can think about things like average true range or simply look at the, the, the daily range or the weekly range of a simple stock and get an idea of what its normal volatility might be. But in this particular environment, the easiest way to, to show this is just look at the amount of movement in the, in the big days uh, on an individual name. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about Spotify because it was an example this morning that, that definitely fits here. And you've had these sort of spouts in the past where a $200 stock going 1% or 2%, you think that's a big move, like that 4 or $5. But ever since we've had this sort of tailspin uh, in, the, in the market and that pullback, you will see that it's the number of days where you put in a $10, $15 range or you know, close to a 5 to 10% range on a stock which isn't used to doing that, it's just far more frequent. You have more of these outsized move days. And when that becomes the norm, you begin to change your expectations, both for the prices you can get uh, in terms of entry points and for the prices that you should be willing to take for exits. And, and the reason I bring up Spotify is because we had the discussion this morning that I didn't really see a setup in the middle of the range for Spotify on the good news gapping up. Uh, sorry, uh, on the good news gapping up, of course, there we go, Spotify. On the good news gapping up, that was still Coinbase. But if it made a dip at the open, I knew we, we were looking at these levels in the, in the mid-40s saying, yeah, but look at this consolidation area of support, 144 into the high 148 range. Like, this area here on good news, that's an area that I think there could be some volume and you could bounce off of. Now, when we were covering this in the pre-market, there was simply not much of it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not going to get to 140, 145, 146. Come on, give me a break. You've got yesterday's afternoon low was six dollars below that's like that's not gonna happen it's four percent it's not gonna make that drop on good news but lo and behold in this market in this year by the time you get to 10 o'clock or 10 30 it's at that price that is the, and the thing about that is it should have been anticipated because we are in an environment now where there's increased volatility and the easiest way to find that is just you can look at a daily chart and look at look at the last six months versus the six months prior to it uh, and that's just simply been the case. Things are stretching out a little bit. And what that means is when something is coming down and you are looking to buy, you can be very patient about the price you expect to get because it is likely to go a little bit further than it normally would. And the same thing follows. If were you in a short position here, then you can expect it maybe has a better chance of extending. So you want to hold your trade for more. It also might mean that you have to enter your trade anticipating a wider stop area. So you might have to take less shares and have a bigger stop in terms of in terms of gross and also expect a bigger winner but you know, that was a perfect example this morning just, we didn't really think it was going to get to that price and in 30 minutes it was there volatility is a big thing right volatility always brings opportunity so anytime you get volatile markets you're going to have opportunities you can choose from a lot of different names all of a sudden that are moving setting up doing whatever you need to do uh, to make money but at the same time you have to be aware that there's different approaches that you have to take when volatility picks up so you have to adjust for volatility in your trading approach, right? So momentum strategies will be great, stellar. Scalping with momentum uh, during the very, very volatile periods, that's going to be the, probably the easiest thing to do at this point, right? Because the markets are moving. You, you get in one direction, it just goes further than you would expect. You cash out. You see the turn. You turn, spin it around. You go for the short. It takes off in the other direction. That's, like, that's exactly what you want to do, but you're not always going to get that. So you have to be prepared for, for times when we go from high volatility periods to low volatility periods. And it's just a matter of managing which approach you're going to take when you get to that period. An example that I want to show you guys is futures. We know futures have been moving decently well in the last little bit. But let's just go back to uh, March the 16th, Fed Day. 
This is the NASDAQ futures. Yeah, we're moving around, you know, uh, from 13.6 uh, in the open, right off the open. We've got as high as 13.850, so 250 points up, went sideways a little bit, fell off. And then Fed comes out. We go from 750 down to 480, large move. Then a rally from 13,480 to 13,980, 500 point rally. That's volatility. That's the kind of opportunity that you're gonna get when the markets go absolutely nuts. And when you have something like that, there's opportunities for momentum plays, entries after the fact. If you miss the move, now you can maybe jump on board at the next break. And this is gonna go in further because there's volatility, there's volume. Everyone's trying to get in, out, pushing things further than they need to go. So this is one of those things where you have to be aware that if it shows up, you may have to change up your approach, your strategy a little bit. And once it kind of fades away, the volatility I'm talking about, if it fades away, then you gotta go back to doing something what you were doing before. Or just a factoring in volatility is a big, big thing when it comes to training strategies and how you approach the market. Because you cannot ignore that because that will dictate how you put your stops in, like Neil said, how far you're gonna let things go and when you start taking profit. It makes you adjust, but it's a good thing to have in the markets because it provides a ton of opportunities. Size does matter in high volatility environments. We'll leave it at that, guys. Great talk on uh, volatility that we're seeing in the market continue to see today. Uh, Miss Danielle Shea, as I mentioned, coming up here in a few minutes, we're gonna get her take on a number of different topics. If you have anything you would like to uh, pass along to Miss Danielle Shea, Miss V is waiting right now. She will uh, let me know and we'll pass it along.